So nobody heard all that. No. Well, we did. Well, that was good. Well, let's just let's just do a refresh and see if uh, see if things are going. I don't know what uh, what happened here. What's not going on? Huh. Oh yeah, there we go. People are watching. <laughs> it's just me. I was Shoot. So my my secret is is yes, not safe. So your secret, yes. There's actually a lot of people out on there. Hey, Facebook is is doing. It. I suppose people bounced out to Facebook because they weren't seeing it out on YouTube. So now you know. Oh, now I'm going to have audio issues or audio going there. There we go. We'll shut that off. <laughs> Yeah, speaking yeah. Of, speaking of our topic before we started, there's ads for those those topics going on. Right oh, that's now. funny. Yeah, that's funny. I'm, I'm already uh, I'm already refining my granola recipe. By the way, I was like oh, a little too much cinnamon and a uh, little a little too much of the pumpkin seeds. I think, uh, but it, it really did turn out good. I, it's like I said, I got to get back to work. I <laughs> I got to get back to these caffeine fueled eighteen hour days of drudgery and rock and roll because this healthy home living stuff is for the birds, man. You know, you'll hit, you you've hit the bottom when you go and you you're thinking to yourself, this bathroom could use a coat of paint. You know, when you start doing that, then it's time. Oh, man, the house has never looked better. Uh, you know, I just changed all the smoke detectors. Um, gosh, I mean, everything's yeah. I, uh, like I said, I don't know what's I don't know what's happening. I'm becoming very domesticated. Very domesticated. I even took a picture of my my granola. I'm, I'll oh, show you. This, you know, this is this this is the good part. All right. So I, although I really would prefer to have one of the kids come in and, and give us their input. Oh, that does look good. That it looks really, healthy too. Yeah, it turned out good. Yeah. Look at, wow. Look at that. There we go. Yeah. Jeez, that that actually looks healthy and and everything. It. Really tastes delicious. By the way, I want to say uh, before we get rolling here. Yes. If you hear snoring during the show, <laughs> okay, that's not a good. That's never a good way to start this show. <laughs> if you hear snoring, just ignore. It. One of our viewers has their mic on. No. Uh, <laughs> if you hear snoring during the show, it's not me. My cat is right there underneath that shelf, and he has occupied a spot down there, and he is snoring loudly. So. <laughs> uh... He, he needs some caffeine. Yeah, some yeah, he needs some, needs some that morning, that morning jolt. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we're kind of getting getting things around here. We had some issues with, uh, for some reason, uh, use, restream didn't go to YouTube right away. But now we are all out and and uh, streaming everywhere for tonight's show. Tonight, Ben, uh, this will probably be a little bit shorter show because I really wanted to just hit on something that that some of us in some markets are going to need to deal with. Some of us are not going to need to deal with it, but it's probably good information for everyone to know on how to properly sanitize the microphone to fit local you know, CDC type guidelines, what have you, Minnesota, in our case, Minnesota Department of Health guidelines, because mm -hmm. um, they did have guidelines on how microphones were to be dealt with how to do this to basically have it as protected for the guests as possible and also not to destroy our microphones and so, go. Well, I, I think that I'm going to disagree and say that not everybody's going to have to deal with this. Uh, I would, I, I would agree. I, I think that there will be jurisdictional differences. Certainly you should always strive for the greatest of these. So, uh, and there isn't really anything specific from the CDC on microphones that I found, but I do have some, some links that I'll share. Um, you know, Minnesota, Minnesota Department of Health does have some standards. If your state has a standard, you should meet or exceed it, in my opinion. Uh, and here's, here's why. Even if your state doesn't have any, there's a legal term called duty of care. Uh, and before we get into any of this, there are two things that I should point out to you, which might come as a big shock. Number one, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I did watch a lot of Matlock as a kid, though. Ooh. But, yeah, uh, but I'm I'm and I'm not I'm not ashamed to say I watched a lot of Murder She Wrote too. So you know, but anyway, I, I could, yeah. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> you were a well-rounded young man. That's probably what led to me making granola later. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm also not a doctor, uh, and while I do come from a family who pretty much everybody else is in the biology field, I am the black sheep and I am in physics. And if you've not seen one of my shows before, it won't take you long to figure that out. So all of these things are coming from a completely unqualified position and they are just my opinion. But in the legal world, there is a term called duty of care, which basically says that in an identical set of circumstances, you would do what a reasonable, per reasonable person would do. You have a legal responsibility to act responsibly. 
and so I think what we're doing here is we're trying to achieve that bar and we're trying to, uh, I would call it an abundance of care. Uh, and the reason that I'm going to say it in that way is because uh, while the, um, you know, the, the EPA and the CDC and the WHO and the MDH and, you know, everybody else, uh, NIOSH and OSHA, all have guidelines that should be looked at. The, the, the information we have, particularly on the present threat of COVID-19, is still emerging. We're still learning. And I think that frustrates people. I saw in back-to-back -back posts, I saw, you know, WHO says that it does not spread by asymptomatic characters, ca carriers. And then I saw, well, they might be characters. Could and be then I saw, sketchy. And then I saw another post just 10 minutes later said, well, that's not exactly what we meant. Mm -hmm. So I think that's frustrating for people that the information is evolving very quickly. And so within that frame, we're going to talk specifically about some methods and some chemicals. And again, we're going to qualify what does and doesn't, you know, do a job. Sounds uh, good. I know you did some things specifically for a graduation, and I think we should talk about that because they were in, they were in adherence to the MDH standard and uh, your client received them very well. Yes. Uh, before I, before you do that, I, I just want to clarify before we get into the rest of this, that there's also a difference between cleaning and disinfecting. Uh, cleaning is the physical removal of things like dirt and germs, and disinfecting is killing those germs uh, or a virus which isn't really alive, but nonetheless rendering it moot, you know? Sure, yeah. So why don't you talk about what you did, and then I'll talk about some ways that we can clean and we can disinfect and some other ways that procedurally probably will line up pretty closely with what you did, but procedurally you can just uh, achieve this, this abundance of caution. So we had a graduation, a drive-by graduation in the Minnesota Department of Health, the MDH, had made recommendations that if a school was going to have that and, and if there were going to be multiple speakers, uh, the salutatorian, valedictorian, what have you, that the microphones be changed or to be sanitized between each speaker. So what we ended up doing is we had multiple microphones. We had picked up, I had Ben send down the little uh, black foam coverings for that. We had 10 of those. We had seven different speaking entities. Thank you, Ben. I didn't, I should have grabbed them. They're in the truck right there. That's and then right. we had a, um, a, a microphone uh, sanitizing spray that uh, we had also, uh, Ben, I had Ben send that down right there. All right. And what uh, what ended up happening is we had one person that was their job. They were the mic person that the principal would go up there, make the announcements, and then the mic person would go up there and take that microphone down and uh, they would wipe the wipe the mic down, wipe the mic stand down, put in a clean microphone that had a new foam on it, bring the microphone back, finish wiping it down, remove the foam, put a new foam on it and um, and. and Back it, back it went. They did the little spritzing between uh, the foam put, to put the new foam on. And that microphone sat for two to five minutes, depending upon how long it was going to be between the next mic change and, and the, in the rotation. So it worked very well. It was just you had every few. <laughs> when when they, they were doing the Val Victorians, they had four Val Victorians. So it would be Val Victorian, the principal's up there, Val Victorian, number one, come on up. And sh she or he would come up. That microphone change swap, do, do, and then they would talk to da, 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 and then they would leave. Then up there, and microphone change. Then the principal's like, "No, Val Victoria number two, go back up there, change mics." Same clean. That's the way the day was. Um, there were seven seven different speakers and and uh, such. So actually, I think that because of the principal, um, we had eight mic changes, but they all happened quickly during that one progression. So it was it was a little cumbersome, but you know, the two to 300 people who were there and watched it, it wasn't, you didn't have people, you know, oh, is this ever going to get, you know, there wasn't that kind of a, 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 a I think a everybody response. gets it. I think I everybody think so. understands what's going on. Right yeah. Now. I think that was the thing is everybody understood that this is just what we have to do. And the, the gentleman who was our mic person, he's in a lot of pictures and a lot of videos of the, you know, he'll be a, kind of the mascot of graduation 2020, you know, as he's up there changing microphones well and, and again if nothing else what you've done is demonstrated that that abundance of caution and that duty of care that you've said hey this is you know i think above and beyond what a reasonable person would do 
uh, I mean, but again, you know, barring any official guidance, uh, that's that's the best we can do. And here's here's a couple things on that. First of all, it shouldn't take a pandemic for you to want to clean your microphone. Uh, a friend of mine said years ago, microphones are like toothbrushes, and he won't even share them. Yeah, uh, most people aren't quite so. Uh, you know, I mean, they'll share a microphone, but let's be honest. Uh, you know, when, when you talk or particularly when you sing, you are ejecting fluid from your mouth and that's flying into the microphone. Uh, some great slow motion videos on that. If that's your thing. Uh, <laughs> ew, ew, ew. I was going to put a picture in and I'm like, you know what? No, I'm no, not going no, the, to the visual. I've got yeah, I you do pretty not. much just work that one out. I'm, I'm having a visual right now of meatloaf singing into the microphone and fluid flying from his mouth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, He's uh, he's not he's not the worst either. But no, but I mean that's the first for some reason I don't know why, but that was the first visual that came to my mind. Uh, so we have to think about you know first of all that's just I, I would recommend occasionally cleaning, uh, and and if not disinfecting and remember they're different things, uh, but I would recommend occasionally cleaning your microphone anyway. Uh, and then we'll talk into some of these, talk about some of these things that you talked about, and we'll kind of walk through some processes and procedures, and we'll get into some of the CDC and, and uh, EPA stuff and whatever. But the other thing is, uh, if we think about what we're trying to accomplish here, principally what we know, at least what I've read, and again, I'm not a doctor, uh, about how COVID-19 spreads is that it gets into your nose or mouth or eyes. So uh, when you uh, are up there using the microphone, if you have the virus and you are ejecting these uh, liquid particles into the microphone, how will that be transmitted to another person? Well, a couple ways. That other person could put their lips on the microphone. And let's be honest, people do. Yep. I don't know why, but some people think that you have to taste it to use it. I can tell you, as a professional sound engineer who's done thousands of shows, that's not the case. No, no. You don't have to, it doesn't have to actually touch your lips. Just saying. That's neither here nor there. Uh, two, uh, and probably more likely, is that they would touch the microphone with their hands and then touch their face. So uh, basically what we're trying to do is minimize that spread. So we think about our objective here. Uh, there's two, two principal factors that are important in viral spread. Again, not a doctor. I did consider being a virologist, though, when Judgment. I was a younger guy. It was interesting. Yeah, whatever. So <laughs> time and viral load. The more time you're exposed to the virus and the higher the concentration of the viral load, the greater the chance that you're going to get it. And I think that makes sense to everybody, right? Mm -hmm. It just makes sense. So what we're trying to do is minimize the time that they're exposed to it and the concentration that they're exposed to. And so in so doing... Uh, you know, when you changed out the microphone and you put a cover on it, first and foremost, let's take a look at the anatomy of a microphone. And uh, I'm going to start with this one. I just took a uh, round. Yeah. Capsule. Yeah, it looks like everybody's seen this, mm -hmm. you know, SM58 type. So we've got the steel mesh on the outside. And on the inside, there's a foam windscreen. And very likely, that's what's going to catch those viral particles. They're going to be caught in that. And, and that foam windscreen is in there for two reasons. One is, as its name implies, it's just to try to help prevent wind and plosives and things from getting into the capsule, make it sound a little bit better. But two is ultimately, and here we can see another one, foam inside. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's to protect the electronics inside. Uh, and here we have a dynamic microphone. So we've got, you know, moving coil. And here... We've got a condenser microphone, again, foam, electronics inside. And so we, we want to keep uh, that fluid out of the electronics. So when you use a cover like this, a foam windscreen, essentially what you're doing is you're creating a barrier on top of that microphone. And a uh, shameless plug, but I'm happy to report that uh, it has not been easy to get my hands on these things, uh, but we have 100 packs of a thin non-woven cloth cloth with an elastic band uh, that they are, I think, like uh, less than two cents a piece or something. They're they're tying, uh, maybe, they're, I guess they're more than that, 20 cents. Math is hard. Anyway. Yeah, math is hard. Math is hard. 
we have 100 packs and it's 100 pack is, is uh, $12.99. $12.99 gets you 100 of these uh, thin, uh, acoustically transparent, non-woven cloth covers. And again, the objective here is to prevent stuff from getting into this part altogether. Mm -hmm. So that when you take the cover off, uh, it hasn't gotten into here and we've minimized the amount of viral load for the next person. Now, um, that being said, this microphone sanitizer is designed primarily to eliminate odor causing germs and other nasty things on microphones because it didn't take a pandemic for microphones to be gross. Very much so, yeah, true. This was designed and, and created years ago before there was a pandemic. Um, if I was to burst your bubble, I would say that I don't know the efficacy. I don't know how quickly it kills COVID-19 or if it does at all. Uh, even harsher chemicals, which we'll talk about in a minute here. You know, I don't know how much of that is killed or how quickly. Uh, again, the CDC and the EPA are working on those guidelines, but even they don't have don't some hard and fast numbers yet. So again, duty of care, abundance of caution. And I think what you did in swapping mics out and that sort of thing is really good. And then uh, uh, after the event, taking them home and cleaning them further would be recommended. So let's just think about this process a little bit. So number one, we want to try to prevent that stuff from getting into the microphone and using a cover that can be removed and discarded is probably a great first step because immediately you eliminate a lot of the virus, mm -hmm. if, if not all of it, I don't know. Two, uh, you know, we put a little sanitizer in there. Uh, if nothing else, it keeps the mic smelling better mm -hmm. uh, and gets rid of some of that. Now, some of the things, and I will share these links, and we'll look at the, the uh, CDC and the EPA stuff, and it's about as exciting as you might imagine it would be. <laughs> but one of the more effective cleaners is something like, uh, uh, here's a 70% alcohol solution. And uh, we actually don't want 100% because it would evaporate too fast. So this actually sticks around long enough to kill some stuff because it, it uh, isn't 100%. Um, and this is isopropyl. Um, Folks at Sennheiser have told me that they have tested their mic surfaces with both uh, isopropyl uh, and uh, ethanol alcohols. However, and, and those should not damage the microphone, uh, but we want to limit that to uh, probably the, the metal parts. Um, we don't really want that to get into the rubber because isopropyl alcohol will ruin this foam rubber. Oh, wow. uh, and I wouldn't use it on the windscreen because it stinks. It smells bad. The next person who's going to use that microphone is going to go, oh, yeah. so that's why we got the, uh, the good apple smelling stuff. So, I mean, who doesn't love an apple smelling microphone? Uh, I would use isopropyl alcohol uh, to wipe down the body of the microphone and the metal connector of the cable, because that is possibly touched by somebody who may have coughed into their hand and that sort of thing. Sure. Do not use isopropyl alcohol on the rubber or ethanol alcohol. Do not use alcohol cleaners on the rubber part of a cable. It will make it brittle and it will cause it to break down just like it does the foam rubber on a microphone. Hmm. Uh, but that would be maybe a um, uh, sort of another part of that process as well. Let's wipe down the handle and the metal connector with alcohol. Let it sit for some time uh, and give the alcohol some time to hopefully work. Again, I don't know how much time it takes. Um, there are... Uh, well, no, I'll just wait. I'll, I'll talk about the rest the other ways I don't recommend in a minute. But then I think I would take these windscreens home and I would take them off and I would wash them in warm, soapy dishwater with regular like dish soap. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would not get the electronics wet. <laughs> yeah, not so much. I put your microphone in the water. Uh, and uh, people have said, well, what about putting them in the dishwasher? I would not. Um, and that the one of the principal reasons is that it can damage the finish or cause it to uh, erode. Or if there's paint on these things, it's probably not going to be there for long. And it will uh, probably damage or distort the uh, foam rubber inside, uh, which is kind of a good segue to why I, another thing about dishwashers. Uh, I have here a note from the, the, the WHO, the WHO that says uh, that they believe the coronavirus is killed at approximately 135 degrees Fahrenheit after about 15 minutes. 
Household dishwasher, uh, they typically run between 120 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which may be hot enough and likely is hot enough to kill the coronavirus, certainly in cooperation with the detergents. However, it's also hot enough to very functionally damage or destroy your microphone. Yeah. <laughs> so don't put your microphone in a dishwasher. I wouldn't even recommend putting the top part in the dishwasher personally. Just wash it in, in uh, soapy dishwater, uh, rinse it, and then let it dry for a couple days. Uh, at that point, again, I'm not a doctor, but you've probably killed most of the coronavirus that could be uh, hanging around. Yeah. Again, cable, same thing. Warm soapy water on the cable. You can use the isopropyl alcohol in the metal, but not on the plastic or the rubber parts. What about a, um, a wireless microphone that has a plastic body? Can a person utilize alcohol on that, or is that frowned upon? Well, same, same. Uh, you can, but it's going to cause that plastic to get more brattle, brittle. Boy, I can't make words today. You are having a little trouble there, yeah. I am, yeah. Hmm. Must be the granola. <laughs> it probably is, yeah. Uh, the high concentrations of cinnamon in there, I think I may have mismeasured. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's going to cause that plastic to get more brittle and to potentially break down. Uh, and certainly doing it more is going to be more of a problem. So um, I don't know that I have a great answer for that. Uh, use metal microphones. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, again, it, you may start to see some of the finish uh, come off yeah. your microphone over time too. Yeah. It's just um, just going to maybe be one of the risks we have here when we're using these cleaners. So, um feel like I had something to uh, to add to that. Uh, oh, uh, UV cleaners. So uh, Somebody had asked me about UV cleaners. Uh, I think the jury is still kind of out on that. There mm -hmm. seems to be a lot of, uh, lot of support that UV of a particular wavelength and intensity does kill the coronavirus. Uh, but UV is light, and so it's line of sight. So it also it has to get everywhere to kill everything. So I, I think full immersion in soapy water uh, for that is probably – you know, my go-to, but again, not a doctor. Um, yeah, plastic microphones. That would be a, be a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's probably, a, well, let's, you know what, let's just take a romp through the CDC and the EPA site. Uh, we may find some cleaners there that are uh, less harmful to plastics that, uh, that we can use. What about uh, something like a Lysol? Yeah, you know, I think that's what I was just just alluding to is that we might find something else, yeah, you know, and I, I don't know what the chemical content of Lysol is and how it might react. And there's different kinds of plastic, too. There's there's not all plastics are created equal for sure. Sure. So uh, that I don't know. Uh, let me just. Uh, oh, yeah. And I got. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We forgot gloves. <laughs> We'll talk about PPE in a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, and that was another thing. The Mike, Mike person had gloves on as if they switched and were hand sanitizing their gloves between uh, between between and also. Uh, for those of you who are watching, in the the chat section here should be the three links, the, one for the, the spray sanitizer, one for the foam pack, uh, the 10-pack of foam covers that I had uh, used for the graduation. And then the other is for the 100 pack of disposable microphone covers that Ben was talking about, which will be available, or they're going to be released, I believe, June 19th. So, yeah, maybe closer to end of June. It's, it's staggered now. Uh, but everybody who's watching, uh, you'll notice that the price on the site is higher than I mentioned. So just uh, shoot me or Katie or Linnea or anybody, whoever your favorite person in NLFX is, and say, hey, Ben said, you got a hundred pack for twelve ninety nine, and we'll take care of that. We'll hook you up. So, excellent. So disregard that link for now. Well, you can go look at them. Yeah, you can go look at them. Yeah, but. and then you can see how much that Ben loves you by giving you a better price when you call him. Really, what this is is because Ben is starting to be concerned a little bit about the granola thing becoming a thing. So if you call Ben, then that will hopefully keep him from going to the next thing where he starts making his own candles. Ah, I never thought of that. Just, I, yeah, I could do that. Yes, you can. Yeah, you're thinking about making candles, aren't you? Yeah, I'm running out of other things to do around the house. <clears throat> uh, so here we have, uh, and these are some links maybe you want to include too, John. Uh, but here is a link for, I, I used community facilities. They Again, they don't have microphones, 
So I thought about places where you'd have a lot of different people. And again, if we look here, we can see summary of recent changes. And uh, you can see that as they learn more about the virus, these things are evolving. So here we can see uh, some of the ways that they discussed cleaning various surfaces. Uh, and they reference disinfectants from the EPA. Uh, if you're a chemistry major, you're going to love this. Uh, if you're not, you may not like it as much. Uh, but here it talks about all the different cleaners. And then it shows you which uh, of that particular cleaner's methods you should follow. So if you're using uh, the uh, sodium hypochlorite uh, and you want to kill coronavirus, you pretend you're trying to kill hepatitis A, for example. Uh, if you're using hydrogen peroxide, which I actually excluded from this show for a few reasons, one being its bleaching properties, uh, but you would uh, you pretend you're uh, trying to kill the uh, feline uh, callus virus. I don't know. I ask one of my siblings. Sorry, uh, sorry, cat. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> I, I don't know what that means. That's a big word. Yeah, I'll have to look it up later. Uh, and then uh, let's talk about gloves for a minute. Because uh, gloves are a thing. And uh, let's talk about why we would wear gloves. Uh, first of all, if you're the person using the microphone, I don't think wearing gloves makes sense. Mm -hmm. the, the virus, to the best of our knowledge, does not enter you through your fingers. So touching something with the virus in and of itself is not the issue. It's when you touch your face uh, and get it into your eyes, nose, or mouth. Now, if you touch something with the virus and you're wearing gloves and you touch your face with the gloved hand, you've effectively accomplished nothing to protect yourself because the virus just rides the glove right to your face. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, while I recommend the person who's cleaning the microphones wears gloves, it's for that reason, to keep their hands clean and to allow for a sterile environment for handling a cleaned microphone. So you don't transfer it from one microphone to the next. So that's the reason you would wear the gloves uh, is to prevent the transfer of the virus from one microphone to the next microphone so that you end up with a clean microphone in the end. Uh, when you dispose of the covering, you would dispose of the gloves. Uh, there is a wonderfully morbid video here uh, for uh, removing the outer gloves. And it looks like something right out of contagion. Uh, but if you notice, this is actually from the Ebola page <laughs> where that is a bit more of a concern. Yeah, it's a little also, bit. What's that? It's a, yeah, it's a little bit different level. Yeah, but they show you how to properly remove the gloves. And the reason that's important is because if you improperly remove the glove, you could still contaminate yourself or something else. So uh, remove the gloves properly uh, to prevent, you know, uh, further contamination. I found another graphic and I do not know whose it is. I tried to find out so I could give them credit. So uh, I don't know, but I just found this and it fundamentally covers the same things as the video. Wash your hands before you put on the gloves wear the gloves, take off the gloves, wash your hands again. Uh, and uh, so anyway, that's covered pretty well in the video. Uh, and that would be a part of the process. Mm -hmm. Arduous? Yes. Ineffective? Don't know. Again, abundance of care, you know, duty of care. Uh, just we're, we're doing our best to protect everybody and really minimize the risk of transmission which is a good thing because if we can have events safely, we can have more events. Precisely. That is excellent. Um, once again, the links are in the, uh, if you're watching YouTube video, the links are in the uh, description of the video. If you're watching the uh, Facebook videos and such, check in the chat. It's up a little bit in the chat. There should be three links that uh, can take you out to NLF, nlfxpro.com, uh, one for the sanitizing spray, one for the mic cover, the foam one, and one for the uh, the little disposable mic covers. In a pinch, you could even use a, a little sandwich baggie. Uh, you know, again, uh, it, it's, it's going to look a little bit ugly. Uh, and no, I don't sell sandwich baggies, uh, you know, but 
it, it, uh, again, if we just think about what we're trying to do here, we're just trying to keep the virus from getting into the foam windscreen uh, within the metal ball, you know, and we're trying to keep it from getting on the surface of the microphone. So in a pinch, I, I, I don't love the idea of a baggie. I don't know how that'll affect the sound. I haven't tested it. Um, just saying, in a pinch, though, I, I'd, I'd rather have sound that isn't perfect than, than get somebody sick. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's but in a couple of weeks, we should have those disposable covers in quantity. They've been very hard to get our hands on, but I think we finally uh, ironed out the supply chain. Um, we should have something close to a million of them by July. So uh, get your orders in and we'll get them to you. Excellent. Excellent. And again, those links are down below. Uh, for the for the show pricing, just reach out to Katie or Ben and say, hey, Ben said. That always, ben said. That yep. always works. Well, gang, we're going to wrap things up for the uh, first show tonight. We'll be back here at the top of the hour. And um, Brian and Jay and I will be talking about uh, about some of the things that they're hearing about gear, some of the gear being released here in 2020 and where those things are at. Uh, we'll be digging into that tonight. And we're going to have a special little... Um, little bonus part tonight we're gonna to be looking at some new software for djs in the second half of our second show tonight that you guys will get the world world debut of that tonight on our show so ben thank you much for for your information tonight on microphones my pleasure john all right catch everyone later bye-bye